Welcome to Excel 2013 Statistical Analysis video number 60. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Business 210 Chapter 9 Second, click on the link below the video. In this video, we want to summarize how to use the T functions to calculate P value and critical value for hypothesis testing. Now we've done three examples. We did one tail to the right, one tail to the left, and two tails. So we want to review that. Here's our first example. We had fuses. The, new, the old machine had a mu of 250 fuses per hour made. We are testing to see if the new machine we got makes more than 250 fuses per hour. We have our sample mean. We have our sample standard deviation, our sample size. We first have to calculate our degrees of freedom. Remember, degrees of freedom, which is calculated sample size minus number of samples, that tells us which t distribution to use. There are many t distributions. All right, and we have to calculate our standard error. We have to use our sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Standard error is the standard deviation for the sampling distribution of x bar. With that standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x bar, we can calculate our test statistic, which is t. We go ahead and take our sample mean minus our hypothesized uh, population mean. That gives us in the numerator our sample error, and we divide it by our standard deviation or sample uh, standard error. So there's our test statistic. With this test statistic, we get to come to some conclusion. Do we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative, or do we fail to reject? We can use p-value or critical value. You can see this picture over here. This describes the problem. We want to see how to calculate that critical value that we already calculated our test statistic, and then also how to calculate the p-value associated with that. Now, one tail on the left are all of our distribution and inverse functions always calculate from negative infinity up to some point. So if we want probability on the upper end, we're going to have to say equals 1 minus t dot and dist functions, whether normal distribution or t functions. All the disks go from a test statistic to a probability. So we want to take this. And for the t's, we have to tell it our degrees of freedom. That says which among the many distributions we have to go to get our probability. And this function has 1, because we're going from negative infinity to our test statistic. So there we go. We have an incredibly small probability. So it's this is very strong evidence that we should reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. Now there's a new function. This is the way we did it. But there is a new function in 2010, t.dist. There's a new right. And that calculates the probability up on the right. So I'm going to give it my test statistic and degrees of freedom, 14 right there. And lo and behold, it calculates our test statistic. This is how we've done it for many, many chapters and through this class, always calculating uh, probability up to that point and taking 1 minus. But that is a great new function. Now the critical value, we're going from probability to value. So we use our inverse. Now t dot inverse, that's going to give us our critical value. That's the hurdle point. And our probability, well, we have alpha of 1% on the upper end. That's not going to work, because remember, they always work from negative infinity up to some point. So we want to say 1 minus. That'll give us 99%. It'll calculate from negative infinity up to that 99% and give us the critical value for our t distribution with degrees of freedom of 14. And so there's our critical value. So in either case, this is way past that. So we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative. And p-value, you compare directly to your alpha. All right, so that's one tail on the right, the upper. Let's see the lower. I already went ahead and calculated the degrees of freedom, standard error, and our test statistic. We need to calculate from our p-value and our critical value. Now, the low tail ones are always the easy, because that's the way these functions are programmed, from negative infinity up to some point. So if we're calculating probability, given some t, I'm going to use the t dot dist. There is our t. 
comma, our degrees of freedom, 49, comma, and our cumulative. This uh, example here was hours to complete building a deck. This was our construction problem where before implementing a new method, the mean time for constructing a deck was 15.5. They implemented a new method, and they went out and took a sample and got this 14.9. All right, so when we get a p-value of 0.17, that means from negative infinity up to this. We compare it, this 17.5% approximately to our 5%, and we fail to reject. We say the new method does not seem to be less than 15.5. If we want to do our critical value, that's the hurdle point. We use our t dot and inverse. Probability, that's our alpha on the low end, comma, and our degrees of freedom tells us which amongst all the t distributions we have to uh, look at. So minus 1.67, we compare this directly to that because the minus 0.94 is not past the critical value. We fail to reject the null hypothesis. All right, and then the final situation for hypothesis testing, you might have a two-tail test. If this example here was, if I control shift 4 to put currency there, control shift 4 here. This was a used car example, and the national average was this, and we went out and got a sample in the Seattle area, and our hypothesis was, is the mean used car price in the Seattle area less than the national average? We went ahead and calculated degrees of freedom, standard error, and test statistic. Now, two-tail. Well, there's a couple ways we do it. We'll do it the first way, and this is the way we've been doing it through all the class. We want to calculate p-value. So our test statistic is right here. So we need to calculate the probability of this 1.52 or greater. And since we're on the upper end, we say equal 1 minus, and we'll use our t dot dist, our test statistic, comma, and we need our degrees of freedom and cumulative. Now this is going to tell us on the upper end, OK? But this is a two-tail test. That's the probability on this side. For a two-tail, you have to double it, because it's also the probability of that same mirror image minus 1.52 or less. So we're going to double it. And we have to force that subtraction first right there. So you have to put it in parentheses like that. Ah, but there is another way to do it, t.dist two tail. And what's nice about this is that you just have to give it the upper t and degrees of freedom. Now the only problem is, is if this value, when you're doing a two tail test, you're, you're testing to see if it's different from, so you're testing on the low and the high. If this is negative, then we need this, we need to convert that to the upper value, no problem. We can use the ABS, absolute value. That's the distance from 0. Again, in this example, we're not going to run into trouble there. right? So all we need is upper T and degrees of freedom. And would you believe it? It calculates the p-value for a two-tail test. Just for kicks, if you type 1.52 minus, right? then this method here is not going to work, but this one will. Control Z. Now we'll calculate our critical value. We're going to get our critical value there and there. Anytime you're calculating a value from a probability, you use equals t dot inverse. Now I'm going to go ahead and calculate the lower end. That's always the easier one. And it's alpha, right? But it's not really alpha on a two tail. It's alpha divided by two. So I'm going to take alpha divided by two and give it the degrees of freedom so it knows which distribution to go look at. There is our low critical value right there, our hurdle on the low end, but we need one on the upper end. I'm simply going to go minus that. Remember, the curves are symmetric. So if you know the one on the lower end, just take the opposite for the one on the upper end. All right, so uh, if we look at our critical value, it's between these two, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now there's a great, just as we saw the t dot dis dot two tail, two tail, there's an inverse. Now the t dot inverse dot two tail will pop out a positive t, which is the value on the upper end. So I'm going to start here equals t dot 
and then our inverse two tail. Now the cool thing about this is that probability right there, you don't have to take the alpha and divide it by two, it knows. That two tail right there, it's programmed to know. So you just give it the whole alpha and the degrees of freedom. And it will give you the upper end t. To get the opposite of that, minus, and do that right there. All right, that's 11 examples of the t functions. We saw how to do t functions for two tail, both p values and critical values. We saw t tail for one tail lower left, p and critical value. And finally, uh, we did right on the uh, one tail right on the upper. And we saw how to do p values and critical value. All right, see you next video.